All right, so I know a couple of you were asking about our agro trials out here and how we kept everything separate. Um, so you can see here, this is the QR code. This is how the team is keeping track of what's the harvested. Um, so after everyone would have harvested a tray, they would come in and go ahead and just write the, and scan that, and that would give them a pop-up, which would then allow them to put the information in. Um, so these three rows right here, this one, this one, this one were agri-grow. So how we sprayed it, it went through the drip, and so what we would do is we would uh, fertigate these and then the last, uh, we would turn off these three rows here and then we would run the aggro row through. So it hit these three rows and then we run it about another 10 minutes or so just to cleanse the line. So technically these got a little bit more moisture, a little bit more water, but um, we were to that point, they were getting too much water because we were going for the suggested uh, length for the field before we actually injected the agri-grow, okay? So they were getting too much water. Now, these are the control rows, and these control rows were actually, this one was picked separately because this was on fabric. So with the fabric row here, this one was uh, harvested completely separate. You can see the, the leaves are smaller. It's not as healthy. Um, and I think that's because nitrogen and such leached during the winter. These are the other two control rows, this one and this one. And if you notice, this control row is bigger. And the reason for that is the agri-grow, again, it's 240 different bacteria, and they will tend to just move around the soil a little bit. They won't move a lot. And so you can see what my uh, dealer said is that basically the agri-grow started to migrate over and infect this row as well, which is good because it meant we were having more yield from this row. But the bad part of that meant that our trial was a little skewed with our control getting a little more production than it typically would have. Um, so that's just one thing to point out. So obviously, you know, we can tell by just looking at the beds and the harvesting that we were viewing that, we're getting more yield off this. Um, this was the lowest yielding and then uh, per row, and then these two, and then obviously the agro the most. Now, one thing we also did notice is that the agro yielded earlier. So we started picking the agro uh, approximately two to three days and it peaked earlier. Um, and so we were, we were harvesting much more earlier than from these over here. So there you go, that's kind of how we had it set up. None of the agro went in overhead. The overhead was just for cooling the berries. It all went in through drip. We did hit some agri-grow uh, later in the season when we were trying to spray for um, disease. Well, uh, basically, botrytis on the berries or gray mold on the berries. So we would use an, a backpack blower for that. Um, and again, we were trying to be careful just to try to spray it. And when we were spreading that, we were spraying this direction. So we never let it spray this direction, get back on here. So we're very careful about making sure it always hit that direction. Um, so there could have been a little bit of splash, but we were as careful as we could have been around that. So there you go. That's a little bit of that. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Um, obviously we'll be using agro next year across the entire farm in a much more, uh, bigger capacity we'll do a few controls but now now it's just costing us money to do controls with the agri without using agro